Happy Monday. Happy Hello. Labor Day if you're in the United States. Friends, welcome to the Dungeon Cooldown. Hi, everybody. I'm seeing Idaho Judge, Johnny Valentine, Brenna, Gateway Guy, C. Joe, Tuo Mask, Gift and Out, Gift Subs. That's very sweet of you. Thank you. Twinsons, how are you? Divine Matt. Uh, it's me and Serena Marie. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. hi. Friends. Uh, yeah, this is our companion show to the Dungeon Run. If you don't know already, we're here to chat all about the last few episodes. Kitty Scritches, how are you? And spe speak of the devil, Kitty Scritches, as I said hi to you, my cat came up and rubbed against my legs. That's very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Betty. Kitty knew. That's right. She <laughs> knew. Sticky pants. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, we're here to chat about. We're here to answer your questions and just talk to each other. There's been a lot going on in the dungeon on the last few episodes. So we got a lot to talk about, Serena. I got I got uh, questions. <laughs> I have questions, too. I bet, so I many about your character. Say, Val... <laughs> Val had a big, big, big emotional episode the last episode. Uh, who else tell you? What's up, man? Um, Val, yeah, we'll get to this. I don't want to dive in. I don't want to dive in head first right away. But, but like, uh, I think I, there's an interesting thing about about keeping secrets or also when you reveal things to your party members or something like that that is very interesting to me. And I did not expect last week to be the episode when I just started telling you guys so much stuff. But then, you know, uh, what, uh, uh, like, Cristobal rolls a nat 20 on a history check. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then I feel like Val, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but, like, it's easy for Val to be very um, guarded, guarded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when there's, like, a little, like, uh, like pinprick in his armor, mm -hmm. it's sort of like the floodgates a little bit, right? Because, yeah. like, Cristobal rolled that, and then and then it was just right a lot of stuff well and i think part of it so this is interesting because i think this will tie into auto a little bit too so mm -hmm. james my character from campaign one was intentionally keeping a lot of secrets um because some of them were very high stakes some of them were you know crimes he'd committed some of it like mm -hmm. so there were things val is not so much that he was just yeah he was more just being guarded and i think the more he's gotten to know the rest of the party and sort of see that he doesn't have to be that guard like what's what yeah. what errors is he still holding on to with these people so it was literally just yeah while at first there was this initial like oh i don't need to tell these people about who i am they shouldn't know or you know anything like that right and we don't know how long we're even going to be together so right. like what's the point right yeah but it's the this you know i think he's started to relax on that end a little bit more um but i say all that because i feel like there's things that octavius is keeping from us <laughs> i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> and i don't want to know I'm very forthcoming <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> yeah well, terrible liar. <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed it's two Omaskins, uh, Sticky Pants, subscribing with Prime. Thank you so much. By the way, I made a note for myself uh, on Twitch. It is September, which oh. means that uh, sub subs uh, gift subs and and sub su subscriptions are thirty percent off all month. So uh, gift away with the subs, like go nuts because everything is cheaper this month in for September. So. Keep that in mind, uh, all you friends out there. I wanted to make a note to mention that. Uh, being a, a good TV show host. <laughs> Twitch yeah, show. Happy host. September. <laughs> September, indeed. But yeah, I just noticing little things like the strong uh, Otto's strong feeling about Obsidian. <laughs> it's kind of like, what's that about? <laughs> you know? And I, <laughs> I I straight up failed an insight check about you this this week too. That's right. I was like, hmm, interesting, okay. And Val's not particularly insightful. There's just times where I'm just sort of like, I don't know how I felt about what she just said, so let's see. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, you're a fighter. Right. You, got, you got stuff going on. You, you're, uh, right. it, it's interesting because Otto truly believes that Val is a hero, hero type sure. person, because you've legitimately saved the boy like the entire time. I could argue um, that almost all of his saves were selfish, but yes. <laughs> but Otto like doesn't yeah. know that, no, right? right. Like, it's, it's absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah, it's kind of that thing where, uh, 
yeah where it's like there's no such thing as an altruistic act you know everything you do is for our own and and val's probably a little more not not so subtle about that you know he's he's pretty selfish but you know it, he'll probably do good things in order to you know in order to like for right now it means that he you know he's helping his friends and helping these mm -hmm. people who are helping him but yeah yeah um i haven't so most of what i gave away uh c joe says i love the big brother little brother thing between <laughs> Otto. so do i and yeah i think same. we we serena and i were clocking it from pretty early on <laughs> yeah <laughs> you getting a buddy cop vibe i think yeah, it was hey. funny and i was like yes 100 percent um <laughs> i wonder if val Otto, and val will eventually form a friendship i think we're already partially there music man yeah um, yeah Otto believes they're friends <laughs> so val is murtaugh wait a minute does that mean, does that, mean that Otto is is mel gibson from lethal weapon i don't know how i <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is, don't don't think about that any further. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Bad bad guy. Uh, I good love, character, I love bad that guy. Movie. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um but let me ask this because most of the stuff that Val told the party this week was almost all in his session zero. Yeah. I don't think oh, wow. I don't, there was, I may have stated some things about Val's ex, for instance, that were like heavily implied in his session zero, but like almost everything, I think most of the audience, if you've watched the session zeros, they knew already. So mm -hmm. let me ask this, is the same true for Otto? Are the, are the, if Otto's keeping secrets, I don't know if, if, yeah, if he yeah, is, yeah. Uh -huh. is the audience aware of it? Yes. Interesting. Fascinating. Yeah, because this is why I love keeping secrets from each other. <laughs> because yeah. I haven't watched anybody else's session zeros. What the heck is going on with Coco and the Faye Wild? Yeah, I so <laughs> I'm really happy that I I checked um, our group messages about it because like I was going to binge everybody's session zero. Oh right. Because I was like, oh, like we're all in a party. I should know your stuff. And then I read your messages, and I was like, oh. Okay, never it's, mind. So, yeah. <laughs> it helps. I, I personally, like, it's something our community loves it, but I, as a performance opportunity, I really like it because it's just, you know, I can say I came by this honestly, you know, or I would come by, yeah. like, my opinions pretty much honestly, where it's like, I'm getting some stuff with Otto I'm not sure about, but, but I have no idea. And it definitely lets you play mm -hmm. it more realistically you know or whatever more grounded yeah. or however you like it yeah it's uh I, it's really fun <laughs> it's I, yeah i'm having a lot of fun with it too i i feel like um and this might come and like bite me in the butt but like <laughs> Otto has uh very much like the boy who cried wolf vibes interesting so like I, I, you know, just saying stuff um, could be true, could be not be true, could be exaggerated, could be like a hundred percent how it happened. Hmm. It's unclear, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I am nervous for when things get like really out of control and something's really a thing. Interesting. That like, I maybe it won't be as believed. <laughs> I, trust me, as someone who basically. <laughs> played chicken with his warlock patron for 60 episodes uh, <laughs> you can ride that line for a long time <laughs> like basic basically campaign one for james was a lot about you seem evil but i'm using your power to do good things and you're not stopping me you're not stopping mm -hmm. me i'm keep going i don't care what you say i'm gonna keep going and that was a lot of his arc was, was kind of like struggling with that you know you've aligned yourself with these dark things but i'm trying to do good things with it to prove that i'm a good person yeah so you can you can ride that line for a long time <laughs> but i think that's <laughs> we can lie to ourselves <laughs> denial's not just a river in egypt as they say <laughs> like you can ride that side for a long time but it it'll it'll bite you at some point probably <laughs> but that's fun <sighs> you say it's uh, fun I mean, yeah fun in an emotionally damaging type of way <laughs> I mean, I think it was, uh, I actually had a lot of fun with this in um, the 
other show that I was in with, too. With, yeah, Dimension Twenty. Yeah. Um, Which, if you haven't Dimension watched Courtney Fay and Flowers for Dimension Twenty, Serena's incredible in it. The show's incredible. Uh, it's so good. Um, they're on episode. Are you just episode six? Is this week or something like that? Yeah, episode six is Wednesday. And it's a ten-week miniseries, so they'll they'll stop mm -hmm. after ten. But I'm sorry, continue. Yeah, um, but it was um, my first real foray into closed secrets. Interesting. Because um, we started filming prior to when we started doing right. uh, the dungeon run. Yeah. Because uh, everything is filmed so far in advance. Right. Um, and so I was not, as a uh, player, I'm not used to closed secrets. I'm just like, oh, like, just so you know, here's how to play with my character. And um, I had to stop myself from doing that because right. we all had such, like, thick secrets. Yeah. But the, the game for me and the game that is kind of happening with the dungeon run is that finding when to say things that are so specific to your secret that maybe the people at the table don't know yet yeah but the people um watching are like oh gosh Otto is nervous and going through something <laughs> or yeah. oh that means that's a reference to this thing like it's it's a weird and fun puzzle like yeah. brain teaser a little bit I love it I it's I I think it's um we try to lean into storytelling and role play more on Dungeon Run as, as much as possible. And it's like putting trust in each other as performers and just, you know, mm -hmm. I trust you that, that you will reveal what what you want to reveal in the in the time that you want to reveal it. And I'm sure the Dungeon yes. Masters will force you occasionally to reveal things that you didn't expect, you know. But I, again, it's believability is important to me. You know, it's just sort of like, mm -hmm. and if I don't have a reason to shout out embarrassing stuff about my character why on earth would i do that you know yeah, stuff about unless Val's... it's like your personality right. to just be like yeah. so embarrassing <laughs> like... the stuff about val's ex i was like that was so much fun to finally tell you because i because i know i know how much appetite for drama our table has and i'm like oh boy there's so much drama in val's past that you guys don't know about yet oh, <laughs> and so I was just failed sort of like, marriage or failed almost failed engagement, marriage failed engagement engagement yeah. that's what a pre-marriage is called yep. yes <laughs> this is i had this thought too we you know we have we love these moments of romance and and you know the the, mo the moments between coco and Drek. everyone is just you know total oh. heart eyes for and, and enjoying so much i will say on our show we've had as many fantasy breakups as we've had as we've had fantasy romances oh my god <laughs> and it was like that's something i haven't <laughs> seen on many other shows it's like sure there's long lost love or pining but in campaign one specifically there were two different one was harp well they were both pretty heartbreaking one was was like uh jessica had a her character had a relationship with a werewolf that was just it was obvious that the werewolf wanted to, it to like move faster and Jessica just did not know how she felt about it. And so there was like a fantasy breakup scene. And then oh. there was one for me where I'm like, my character's like literally turning into a demon and I get the sense that this woman really likes him. And he's like, I, I, uh, you should not, <laughs> you need to move on. Yeah, I'm <laughs> trouble. You don't want it was this smoke. <laughs> one of the, yeah, seriously, it was one of the saddest scenes it was I was literally like, oh. you're great. I am turning into a demon. <laughs> it's not it's not you it's me turning into a demon yeah. i think was something that got said in the chat at a certain point so yeah i don't know what that is but yeah the the, the funny moment of ron as direct saying oh so you lost your love match and i was like that's a very romantic way to put what happened <laughs> it's just a breakup really i mean you know there's a whole reason poor nance i know sticky pants nance was the name was the name yeah Nance. probably still crying oh no um but goodness Taparto says some force cards could maybe maybe make you spill some secrets that can happen too <laughs> ginger beard ahoy um divine matt asks us and we'll start get jumping to some of these questions uh but let's start with some easy ones divine matt said what made us uh, i thought nance was much older than james no they were about the same age uh, what made us pick your your race and class for what, what led you to an owl and rogue you've played arcane trickster, trickster rogue before right you've said that it's your favorite subclass yeah, yeah. uh so, okay two thoughts just try to Please. climb through the door that is my brain um, <laughs> Do it. um first thought um I, I i love rogues um i think 
in a show where we're playing it live, um, I wanted to pick the subclass that I was the most comfortable playing. Sure. Um, and that like, I, I don't have to look at my sheet as much. Like I know like mostly like what it is that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was coming up with the character, uh, I wanted to play uh, originally an Ares in Aarakocra. Mm-hmm. Right. So it would have been uh, it yeah. was a type of owl. But then uh, after talking with like you and Ron. Um, I think the owl, and, like, the owl and race was like pretty new at that point. Yeah. 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 And it was, it was a, such a perfect fit. Like, um, because I just wanted to play a burrowing owl because they're very cute. Yeah. And I, I don't, I just thought it would be like from just the burrowing owl came like all of like the story of what would that mean to live underground? Yeah. Uh, that is so yeah. F- what about you? It's so funny sometimes what'll give us inspiration um, and, and, and kind of where ideas for characters come from. Some, and, and it can be so many things. Sometimes sometimes it'll come from like looking through, oh, that's an interesting idea for a, a race or something like, like that. Mm-hmm. You know, what would a Herringon character be like? You know, something like that. And then sometimes they just come from really weird places, like seeing a picture of a burrowing owl and going, what if that were my D&D character? <laughs> what if that were my D&D character? <laughs> like, what if I played a little Boy Scout? Yeah. Like... <laughs> Uh, I like the idea of playing a fighter this time because I wanted to. I really like sword fighting. I was trained in sword fighting back and back when I was a theater trained a classical theater actor, and so I, it's been years at this point. But I really like sword fighting, and I kind of wanted to approach like a martial class with kind of the descriptiveness and the fun of spells, if I could, because spells are so descriptive and visual. And then so many times when we're just when the martial fighters are like, I run up and hit it with my axe, you know, it's like, I wanted to kind of give it kind of a, a visual kind of, you know, give myself that challenge. Um, and then his subclass, which some, I'm not going to say it yet to not spoil any, but, but basically okay. if you watched last week's episode, there's some massive hints about what Val's subclass is. Um, the subclass for me was about uh i i liked the idea of someone who basically was regretting a lot of your past decisions huh you know <laughs> no like <laughs> regretting like just someone with a lot of things in their past that they wish they could do something about and then it actually was partially inspired by everything everywhere all at once where it was like different oh. uni- universes and multiverses where you every time you make a decision it branches off to something else and I already kind of had this idea in my head of different ideas. And I was like, I was like, or of different deci- what if you could have made different decisions? Which by the way, Jessica like called that out this week in it, it, one of those ways, cause it was improv. She does not know all the stuff that is, that is in Val's backstory. And when she had that little speech about what if you could yeah. you know, start your life over differently, I, it blew my mind. I was like, you just pretty much laid out basically everything that I've been like keeping in mind for Val the whole time. Like that's what she said is basically what he is, what, what the arc of his, his whole story is about. Um, I, I love those moments though, because it, it, it shows that one, you have been portraying uh, Val in a way that had signaled to her that that maybe is what you needed to hear. Yeah. And she's an incredible improviser and like yeah. picked it up and yeah. and that yeah and so it was actually her saying that that was the absolute like key that unlocked the moment towards the beginning of the second half where he and and he has this he thinks it's a dream it's not a dream uh, you know. And I, and I I feel responsible for that. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Right? Where Val had that moment of like, I kind of hope it is a dream actually. Um, where and then I just and we were still on this ice floe in the middle of the river, and so this idea came to me of, what if you were sitting there on watch by yourself, and then literally you look across, and less than twenty feet away from you, there's somebody that looks just like you, on on another ice floe, and you're just passing each other. And, and that was just a visual when she I, I, I came up with it in the moment it literally just like it was just a, a visual click that was like oh that would be so cool and so then I just said about like alright I'm going to make this moment happen and uh, yeah 
What I find interesting is it's not only you seeing yourself float by or you in the reflection, it's a better version of you. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we all need to go to therapy. I oh, think that's yeah. what needs to oh, happen. Yeah. <laughs> Group sesh. <laughs> yep, yep, 100%. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's see. Okay, so from Tool Mask on, on our Patreon, I've got a lovely question here. This is getting into Val. A bit, little bit of a Val and auto connection here. Does Val know the magnitude of his family's financial problems? And would Otto's gems cover the hole his family is in? <laughs> that with moment Otto's with shiny the rocks? Gems, again, what? not knowing anything about Otto, that was a huge moment where I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> And you're like, oh, sapphires, diamonds, these? these? <laughs> they're they're lucky. We... I like them. You know, they're, they're shiny. Just, they're just pretty. <laughs> Brianna, <laughs> you're not wrong. There it is. Um, but uh, and so the um, auto or so does Val know the magnitude of his family's financial problems? No, not really. What what you've seen in, in what you've seen in Val's session zero is what Val knows which is that he, uh, his family seems to be in financial trouble. I wouldn't think, given the extent that Val has seen, I wouldn't think a handful of a few gems would be enough to cover it. Um, so now it would be a very interesting, conflicted place that we would reach if I discover that Otto has access to, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more of these. You can. I don't. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> right, that's fine. Ma you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to say anything. Um, maybe if we ever get to a point like that, then there might be some conflict. But right yeah. now, it's just sort of like, whoa, more interesting, and like, whoa, what? <laughs> but the "what is rich" moment was maybe one of my favorite episode moments of last episode. I love that. Well, but. I was I was thinking about it because. Um, uh, Coco uh, and Otto share a ton of similarities, even though they, um, one, like Coco is from like the Feywild, mm -hmm. but Otto like is also in working within a different type of society. Right. 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 And so like, um, I see everything in like this Owlin community as very collectivist. Sure. Like everyone helps each other. Everybody's like, uh, you don't, need anything all your needs are taken care of uh and so the idea of like money or like having more than is like <laughs> breaks Otto's brain and, and breaks coco's brain too and i just thought that was so funny the back and forth of sometimes mushrooms sometimes flowers sometimes, yeah, yeah eggs, twigs eggs, eggs, a, yeah, eggs, a shiny rock eggs, eggs, <laughs> eggs yeah the back and forth of that made me laugh so much um well and this was this was actually the first episode that i've heard you reference him before but this was the first time that to me you'd ever clearly said in game the name uncle professor general jeb jeb <laughs> which did I, oh, get, did I get that right yeah is that the correct did. order uncle, uncle uncle professor general professor general jeb yeah okay. i mean to, to literally everyone else it's just general professor right but to Otto, it's uncle uncle general professor. general professor <laughs> <laughs> yeah Hey, Kitsune. Hello from upstate central New York. Hello. What's up? Hi. Um, yeah. So what What a character. What a name. I think you, I think I heard you drop that name like one of the first times we were talking about it. And I was like, wait a minute. What? That's so well, incredible. It was from our session zero. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Jess asked like, has anybody been like academy trained? Mm -hmm. And I just like improv goblin was like, yeah, my uncle Jeb Jeb trained me. And then I'm like, oh my God, he <laughs> trained all of us. He's also a general. Like <laughs> the, just the list of titles just, it's just grows and yeah. grows. I love that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Topardos asks, what's been our favorite moment that our for our characters so far in the first old seven in the first seven episodes? Boy, that's a tough one. Uh Hmm. favorite character moments so far i mean wow i don't know um hmm i mean coke for, for 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 other characters the coco and drek moment is still probably my favorite moment for coco i don't know what's happening with the gnome 
and the or someone asked earlier oh if we God. learned that that gnome's name i don't believe so i don't think so but i want to know everything about them yep and be their friend like and, <laughs> and wait if those worms have some kind of mm -hmm. Boy, that colors so many things where you're like, if those worms were actually tied to some sort of bigger thing that Coco oh. has been doing, and we've been eating We've been eating them. Oh, such a mess, such a mess, we're such gonna... a mess. <laughs> we might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we might be in real trouble. <laughs> we have Which is, of course. We've ticked off an archfey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Even it's it's always the people you least expect. Coco Coco's got secrets going on. What what's happening? Coco doesn't know her secrets sometimes. <laughs> I think, which is perfect. She doesn't know if it's been fifty days or one day since she since yes. she arrived. <laughs> oh god! Two OMS says maybe they're just Fey souls. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, oh no! <laughs> Yikes! Otto's eaten so many. <laughs> like oh god i know yeah yeah otto's a bird of course he did yeah i i will say the auto scene with uh with olivar uh that was so emotional was so lovely and so revealing in so many ways uh, it, it's one of those beautiful things about like these we we each we did not create our characters around the table together <laughs> we all kind of came up with them sort of separately and then how they're tying together in the in the most fascinating ways um and you know the fact that Otto a is afraid that they are are cursed and are mm -hmm. and are and and they're bringing bad things to the people they care about is so something I relate to hard and you know and and is so heartbreaking and um but then also like just you know trying to find a home and and wanting those things and just everyone's just you know like a like open chest here's my heart is seems like so many val has not felt like that and maybe he's he, but he's opening up slowly but saint otto coco specifically all three of them is just all very much feel like that you know and i could be wrong i you know you could prove me wrong of course but there's in that yeah. in that way yeah Go ahead. Yeah, and I think um, there's a lot of um, heart forward gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. Between um, like the three characters, uh, myself, Otto, or I am Otto, God, <laughs> uh, Coco, and Saint. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate that Val isn't like in the boat yet, the metaphorical, right. we're all doing this together boat, because like for Val, and, and I, it's it's realistic and i appreciate it that like trust and all of these things have to be earned yeah um and val needs to feel safe in order to do so and from the jump from the yeah. first episode we were all plunged into safety to was a in short peril. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah the really. safest we're on right now is on this like ice cap right. and like we had one that was just a blood ice cap you know what i mean so like is it safe yeah. was it safe <laughs> right yeah it, that is so true and and basically it was i i had this thought too where it's like how these characters would be different depending on which party you put them in you know yeah there yeah. there could have been stuff that val again could have kept forever you mm -hmm. know or could have kept from the others for a long time but again the fact that you're with saint and otto and coco who are all just so sweet and calling him a hero and he's like stop you know what I mean? and it's just all of these things um he's someone that has felt like a letdown to to his family for so long that it's just kind of like it's just assumed that yeah well he's the disappointment and so you know he in a way he's already feeling more supportive than he probably has in years <laughs> which which so you're just kind of like this group of strangers <laughs> yeah which is sad but also really sweet and wonderful yeah but it, the fact that everybody was kind of looking for, you know saints looking for her sister uh, coco is yeah. looking for her family otto i don't this is a good question it sounds like otto's <laughs> looking for their home but i don't i mean you don't have to answer if you don't want to but Otto's um, greater motivation. Yeah, Otto's greater motivation, honestly, is to um, 
there's it's a there's two and i'm i'm not being cagey no. like my stuttering isn't being like ooh <laughs> what fine. what don't i want to say it, yeah. it's more of just like um auto is worried about home is very worried about home mm-hmm. um but at the same time knows like his mission mm-hmm. his duty is to um learn about the surface world mm-hmm. um so that he can bring that knowledge back wow yeah just... so he's just kind of like truly vibing right and like a little bit why he's not as um not as homesick as val is right well, um, i wouldn't i wouldn't call val homesick he's just kind of worried he's just yeah without giving away too much val's session zero was a discovery of how much is going wrong Mm. that I don't, you know, and it was literally, and and him kind of getting blamed for some of it unfairly, in my opinion. And, and there was all the, and, and then you're just finding out all this stuff is going wrong and then you get yanked out of it. Uh, so you can't yeah. do a thing about it. And so, so it was honest when it was like, well, what do you, what do you wish you were doing? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I, if I were there, could I do anything? Maybe I probably couldn't, but, but the fact that I'm not, and the fact that I'm, you know, just gone and helpless, that's a control thing that that would of Morgan would that would freak him out. <laughs> it was, you know, yeah. just like just knowing that being present or being able to help is, you know, that's something that I I certainly, you know, I, I strive for or want for so much in my own life and it it it's always like drives you crazy is when there's something wrong and you can't do anything about it. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of the, the biggest thing kind of driving Val crazy, but yeah. Yeah. No, (laughs) but so that's why you're saying like Otto is less homesick because there is part of him that realizes that here in this, in the surface world, he is of service to his, to his family, to his community. I mean, all this, everything that he's learning. Yeah. Like, and it's just like, um, I, I I'm trying to be just as an um as an improviser, so it's sort of like a little bit of a meta thing. Sure. Um one note that I uh so I took dramatic improv in Chicago. I never and actually one of the took no- a class in dramatic improv and I and I wish I had, but I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> it's super fascinating. Um but uh one of the things is like um shine when you're shining light on your um your objective, like so, the audience knows, and you're revealing it. Uh, talking about the past or talking about things that are not in the room is less powerful than bringing it in the room. Interesting. So, yeah. oh, yes. as right, and so as an improviser, I'm 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 trying to be mindful in making auto mindful mm-hmm. and uh, making sure that like his stakes are like like you said, like bringing everybody bad luck. Like if he's Mm. cursed, if he believes that he's cursed, then staying with the party might be a liability for everyone. Yeah, that's so sad. Like, yeah. Jared had a similar moment in in the first campaign. Jared had a couple episodes early on where I've never seen a string of bad rolls like Jared had, like Uh. literally like three nat ones in a row at one point. It was, or it couldn't roll above a five was what it felt like. And he absorbed it. It was bumming him out, but and and he absorbed it in a character way too, where it's just sort of like I I think Siv thinks he's cursed. <laughs> and, oh. and yeah, and it was and it was a similar thing. Uh, it, it was basically and and that helped the party sort of come around him and go like, no, it's gonna be all right. You know, we save you, mm-hmm. you'll save us later. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, who else? Elliot wants to know what drew you to playing a character with childlike qualities. What do you, what do, is there something about playing a younger, younger, what, no, uh, wait a minute. No, Otto's totally an adult. He's an adult, yeah, first on. of all. <laughs> he totally passed his, I'm an adult. Has he had his Alan Quinceanera? <laughs> yeah, his basically Alan Quinceanera has happened. He is in adulthood. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think with playing, um, because I think a lot of us, well, you, um, Jessica and like the rest of the Dungeon Run crew like knew each other very well mm-hmm. but um, Carrie and I were coming in as new players right. and so um, 
I always think uh, what is fun to improvise, like how can I follow fun? Yeah. And I, uh, surprising literally no one. So in chat, this will not surprise you. I have ADHD. Um, and so kind of playing characters that lean into sort of like the hyperactivity part of my brain or the bra part that I'm where I want to chase the shiny thing, um, <laughs> sort of lends itself to like a childlike yeah. character. Yeah. Um, but also allows me to like have moments where like things have more stakes because sure. I am young like yeah. i don't know if that it's makes like sense the first time or it's more dramatic or or you know yeah, yeah. Something, something that that lands harder because of their youth because of whatever because of an experience of life right yeah. like they're they don't have a lot of like like you know you have a failed engagement like otto's never had a relationship right. like right yeah oh hang on hang on Be betty is requesting come, come here oh dang it sorry my cat my cat was ru running around she looked like she wanted to come up but no no, not apparently. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I I love that. And my favorite people to perform with and improvise with are people that are very self-aware and, uh, and able to use their stuff about themselves and then play into it or even subvert mm -hmm. it sometimes, too. Yes. And... Like, I think that's like some of the most valuable things that you can take from improv classes or whatever is awareness of like your wheelhouse and what kind of presence you give off to other people, mm -hmm. where where your instincts are so often like prone to go. Like this is, yep. you know, and then sometimes you can work against it or just sometimes you just go right, right to it. You know, um, yeah, I, I, you know, awkward awkward nerdy guy i can play in my sleep you know, it, it, it's like, and so then it's like all right well what what's a different version of that you know or what's like what what qualities can i take and put into other things and stretch you know or something like that yeah um that's so fun and, and just learning those things about yourself and using mm -hmm. them eventually as 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 tools because improv D and D, you know performing any of it like i find that's just like it's better the 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 more personal you can make it um it's you're not always able to but like if you can make it just more echoing more within yourself it's it's i, I find the better the deeper and better it gets yeah yeah i agree i think that it's it's about finding um what part of yourself or your personality or your experience or something that you can sustain long term right because like D, D campaigns are often you know like two to three hours yeah uh and like an improv show is like you know an improv set is <laughs> like boom, 30 boom. minutes yes exactly so like you know figuring out what you can live in for a long period of time right right and then that's like i uh someone was saying who else elliot pointed out this is very nice thank you elliot it's a testament to morgan that i get a little anxiety that val might abandon them when i know it's a show and he yo <laughs> um <laughs> You're I, trapped. <laughs> yeah, you're trapped. Um, I like, I like having an idea, of, you know, I'm always open to being surprised. I like having an idea of what my character arc is going to be. I like having an idea. That was one of the things that led me to Val. It was like, this is an arc that I think is interesting, and uh, it, that is, you're correct, Elliot. That it's like, yeah, I think for for a while, I think that is how he does feel that you know and now he's even starting to open up but he's still feeling this pull and still feeling these stakes from his past life or whatever you want to call it where you know even though he he cares about these these people that he's with now um still if you if you gave him an out right now he would still take it because of the depth of of everything from previous um and so that's something I just I like to have an idea of what a character arc is going to be, but then I'm always willing to completely throw it out if if I find something more interesting or if the story leads us in a completely different direction. You know, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I um, I was telling um in the character creation process um, like 
the crew like you know they asked us to submit like our backstory yeah. to them and, and all of that ron and jared and sent always... us a pretty long questionnaire we didn't like have to answer all of it yeah in fact i i think i answered maybe maybe 50 60 percent of it uh but it was more just about yeah like spurring spurring creativity but yeah continue please mm -hmm. um but in in that um those are always hard for me because i like to discover things mm -hmm. So like, I like will put something out there and it, it might not make sense like that I've done this, mm -hmm. but then, um, in four episodes from now, I'm like, oh, I know what this does. Mm -hmm. Like my Sapphire right now, I don't know what it does, right? but it could do something really cool later. Yes. Like, you know, and I just love having those moments. And so writing, um, so that's just to say, like, I don't know where Otto's arc right. is going to take me quite yet. Most of um, D&D, I've said this, yeah. I've said this to like friends where I, where I DM home games for friends and most of them, I really like DMing for like brand new players. And somebody was literally asking me the other day, I was talking about like what an arcane focus is. And he was kind of like, what is that? Why do I need that? And I'm like, well, you need it for your magic. And he's like, and he's like, why do I need all these like little details? And I'm like, and I'm like, the thing about D&D is you may not. You may not need all those little details, mm -hmm. but D&D &D is just there to give you as much fuel for the fire of your own creativity as possible. It's all just writing prompts, you know, like your backstory, your back, the character's yeah. background might never come up or it really might, or it might inspire you yes. to think about what your character might do in this situation, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's all like you give yourself little treats and you have mm -hmm. no idea when or how they will pay off and the gems yes. sound like they're very much that where he's like oh and otto's got about a thousand gold worth of gems in his back yeah. <laughs> it's like, sorry what <laughs> it's, it's like oh did i forget to tell you that <laughs> wait a minute what yeah uh it, it's and you yeah you you have no idea how it'll pay off but you're just sort of like this might pay off <laughs> in a fascinating way that no one expects Mm -hmm. uh, or not, <laughs> you, know, or you not. just have to be open to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, uh, well, but uh, I that's didn't. A really... Go but, ahead. I was gonna say I was... your own favorite, your own favorite moment for for Otto or for or for other characters, or anything like that. Oh, right? I you know I was actually gonna say um, my favorite moment to uh, watch as like as just like a spectator, like somebody just enjoying the game. Mm -hmm was your moment actually uh in the last episode when you saw your reflection yeah. because i knew what was up yeah uh but yeah, otto the rest, doesn't know about it the rest and of the like, players know what val's subclass is and i've sworn them to secrecy <laughs> yes because <laughs> i'm like uh, i don't know when this will come out uh, yeah but yeah. to see that happen i was just so excited because awesome. like it was in such a a smart way of showing that subclass like i wouldn't have thought about how to visually have that come up like right. organically to where it feels like it's a moment right. and you did it so masterfully so like that's i so nice. loved it that's so nice thank you yeah it's um i think the i was really struck by the yeah like i said with like you know whether it's multiverse or you know like basically the string of of decisions like having mm -hmm. your life branch off into so many different ways um that it, it was what the subclass actually is on paper is not like it's not going to be word for word that because like when you kind of uh all right i'm just going to say it so chat you can it's it's the echo knight subclass and if you go to if you read up what an echo knight is it's more mostly based around uh, from stuff from Critical Role and Exandria, where it's mm -hmm. based around like this study of of different possibilities, and I'm I'm taking the seed of that idea and kind of putting it into our story in a different way. So I think we'll still surprise you. It's it's you know in in how we do it, but it was more just based around that idea of someone who felt like they had made so many poor decisions in their life given a way to reflect and possibly change or possibly do something you know or literally what if that different version of you was right there and was joining mm -hmm. you in battle um yeah yeah it's it was a fascinating idea to me and something i really wanted to play around with 
and then because uh, I yeah I, I already kind of had the idea in my head and then I saw everything everywhere all at once and it blew the roof of my head off and I was like, oh, <laughs> you're like that's it. it that's what I'm doing yeah you know <laughs> yes I was like that's that's incredible uh, if you haven't seen everything everywhere all at once see it it's so good the best thing I've seen this year and most years uh, yeah but um, right, we have a couple more questions that I want to make sure we get to. Yeah, there's um, one I saw from Elliot. Yes. Uh, I just want to answer it real quick. Uh, somebody already answered it, but I just like want sure. to confirm. Yes. Uh, Uncle Professor Jeb Jeb, what is he the professor of? Oh, excellent question. Uh, yes, does he, he is doctor? professor. <laughs> he does. Uh, well, I mean, Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> de facto doctor. Right. He could be a doctor too, for sure. all I know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, he's a professor of the surface. So oh. like the keeper of all the surface knowledge. Surface studies. Yes, yeah, surface studies. <laughs> and that teaches all of us. <laughs> professor of the surface. I love it. Yeah. Um, I saw Kilderin asked, what do you think at this point leads you to trusting the other four player characters at the table? That's Such really, a good question. That is a really good question. I mean, part of it is a definite choice. And part of it is is the nature of the story that Ron and Jared have thrust us into, which is this, you know, shared trauma, shared survival kind of. And so you're sort of forced to trust each, trust each other a little bit. And part of it, I'll be honest, I mean, it's not it's not metagamey, but I think we all performers come to this wanting this party to become a party. I think it's that balance sometimes of playing it believably, playing your character arcs, but really also wanting to come together. And because that's just more fun. You know, we could be, we could all be chaotic, evil people stabbing each other in the back if we wanted to. I've played at those tables. I don't enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> or you enjoy it for a little while and then it starts to bum you out. <laughs> so I think we all kind of checked. I think, I feel like we even had conversations about that. Like talking to Carrie, she's kind of like, you know what's this going to be like I, I i think you know it's like well it's obvious everybody's kind of themes are coming together in this little way mm -hmm. and then we'll just kind of see so part of it is i i think it's a good question kilderin where it's like you don't want to rush that trust but i i think that trust is building and forming and i and i think all five of these characters and and six with ursula as well i think they all mm -hmm. need it too i think they they yeah. need each other and that's a story I, I love telling, you know, and why they need each other and how they need each other and, and what in their past led them to this. That's the beauty of D&D, &D, right? You know, at its best is found families and, and why we're more alike than we're different and, you know, all that beautiful stuff. I love that stuff. And I'm just going to go on the record to say, yeah. should Val magically, magic circumstances be transported back to the north island uh-huh uh, or the south island. uh south, I th south island Great. yes 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 uh he's gonna miss Otto. a thousand percent he's gonna miss the group like i i don't yeah I d don't i mean you can you can tease that i i don't i don't expect that to happen anytime soon but yeah <laughs> and by the way i'll take it as a testament sometimes <laughs> this happened to Katie a bunch in campaign one for some reason where her character would have like moral issue with things we were doing and then chat would be like is Katie leaving the show I feel like Katie's leaving the show <laughs> and it's like guys Katie isn't leaving the show <laughs> no. she's just playing her character very well <laughs> and it was like so it's like I guess in a way it's a compliment to to how you're playing your character if they're like wait does this mean you're leaving and it's like no it just yeah. means he's having doubts about this whole thing <laughs> yeah it's very true yeah yeah and then yeah who else Elliot I think that's well said I think the player's job is to figure out how they come together and then, then what they struggle with on the way that's right yeah yeah but you know I I want that I, I I want that sweet that sweet warm feeling of the of the group coming together and trusting each other and friendships and whatever else that turns into dang it I mean dang it I mean, can we not say? Oh no, that? no, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, sorry. I was <laughs> no, like, oh no. <laughs> no, I just had a thought. No, I had a, oh. it was a perfect example of like, I never expected to basically become Jessica's character's father figure in campaign one. And she, mm. and, and she called it out in like episode 16. And 
It was a hilariously funny moment because it was a moment that could have been romantic, even though neither of us neither of us really saw it that way. I said, "Dang it!" I didn't say a swear word. <laughs> did I? Wait, hang on. No, no you did. You did it. Okay. Uh, Play back the tape. Just <laughs> we're fine. Um, and and it's such a, a funny moment because people are like, "Boy, that!" Because Jessica said, "You remind me of my dad," and everyone was like, "Ooh, burn!" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, hang on." <laughs> his character my, my character is not really looking to her character for that at all for romance <laughs> but everyone's like that is the last thing you want a woman to say to you <laughs> it was very funny but but it became the arc of their characters this sort of odd fatherly relationship that i would not have expected at all when the adventure started but that's where it eventually went yeah and it was a compliment i mean her dad was a, a pretty powerful cool guy but yeah it was something that utterly took me by surprise and again played into my the fact that i was playing a character that felt like he was cursed and felt like he was you know bringing all these bad things and so the fact that like you see this person really connecting with you in that way and i was like oh no oh no oh no Uh, it's gonna be bad for everybody it's not me i'm not the one there's one more question from c joe on our patreon that i want to make sure we get to um okay this is a longer one. Hang on. Morgan, okay. do I think Val's dad's death has anything to do with why your family's crop isn't fi- isn't isn't failing like all the others? Like maybe he made some type of deal and the dealer came to collect. I just find <gasps> it odd that so many other crops and animals are dying, but they specifically said it should be a good harvest for your family this year. See, Joe, you're putting some interesting things together there. I mean, I... I don't know. And Val certainly doesn't know. Um, the This isn't too much. Serena, what I, I, Val would tell you this. He doesn't know how his father died. <laughs> Oops. Oh. I see you in chat, CJ. Oops. <laughs> um, it, it, he, he doesn't. I, he basically, he just seemed to die. And now it's a little, it's kind of a mystery. Oh, wow. But it's unclear and the family is struggling financially but then yes val did notice that that his family's crops are doing fine so it didn't make sense that the house that that everything else seemed to be going so poorly so some things see joe what i'll say is you're right that some things are not adding up in potentially suspicious ways i don't know what they mean but you and i are looking at yeah i think i think you're asking the right questions and then we'll see i don't know i don't know that's the best part because only ron and jared know only ron and jared right that's right uh i know they're keeping secrets keeping so many secrets from us i know okay so oh gosh and we haven't even talked about like what happened we're, we're we're running low on time here we're pretty much near the end but i wanted like all, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the end of the episode because I feel like so much happened in the last 10 minutes of the episode that I'd be like, I was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oliver? Uh, Oliver like... and the giant wasp and then the skull was floating in yeah. front of me at the end. Oh, so, my God. Like, there was so I much. About the skull. Yeah, exactly. I, I was like, oh, no, I feel like there's going to be some things that I just miss if we, if we don't catch it. Soul-sucking bees. Not great. Um, <laughs> some... so weird to Parto. So, so weird. Weird. So I'm gonna have to definitely go back and rewatch the end of the last week before we start on Wednesday. Cause yeesh. Cause we're in it. We are <laughs> off to the races. Hey, we are like... in, in it now, man. <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, well, before we before we wrap up, is there any? Uh, is I think we've 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 hit all the questions. You're you're all amazing, chat. Thank you for being here with us. We love we love diving deep on this stuff. I could, I could talk with Serena for hours. Uh, Same. <laughs> anything You're the else? best. <laughs> You're the best. Anything else you want to share or talk about, Serena? Anything else on, on your mind, auto-wise, or how are you feeling? Uh, I, about? I, I, honestly, I'm uh, I'm just excited about getting to, like, our characters all getting to know each other better yeah. and play, like, an RP moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, next episode, I feel like it's going to be, like, be bashing moments. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Or running from bee moments. <laughs> running from bees, more like. <laughs> um, 
giant, but yeah, what about you? Giant and giant man-sized wasps. Uh-uh. No, no, no. It's m super messed up. And like no. Otto's not man-sized. <laughs> so that bee <laughs> or that wasp is messed up. Yikes. Oh god. Yeah, there's so much going on in the forest. I just don't know. Um I'm looking forward to I think that vision I'm looking forward to at least figuring out a little bit. I think that vision that happened at the end with it seemed to be like gods in disagreement of each other. Tre treacherous oh. idol, behemoth. Well done, treacherous <laughs> idol. Well done. <laughs> Incredible. Well done. I feel <laughs> like that moment is huge. It's kind of a low-key huge thing that we'll be kind of revisiting and thinking about forever. What was going on? What was going on in that in that kind of council of disagreement yes. of the gods? A two-headed dragon, right, was on one side disagreeing with seemingly like Bahatha mm -hmm. or or Thasha. I don't remember. Again, I need yeah, to yeah. So it's like, did Bahatha mess up, yeah. or is is she on the outs with the other gods? Like, right. I'm so curious. Right. No idea. Yeah, to a mask, force of cosmos versus nature. Right, is the dragon the representation of the force of cosmos? I don't oh. know. Because the owlbear is Bahatha's. Right. What right. is it? Bahatha is something. Oh, Avatar. No, 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 no. no. Oh, like it's right. It's like her heart, her mind, her spirit. Like oh, it's yes, like yes, one yes, of those yes. things. Uh, uh, with right. The will. It was the will of the uh, will, the and it's not an owlbear. Author. It's not an it's owlbear. Something but else. It sounded like an owlbear. We all thought yeah. an owlbear. Um, but yeah. no, it's something else, right? Yeah. It's described like a manticore style thing, where it's like a combination yeah. of a few things. Yeah. So I can't wait to to learn more about that because I feel like that is a big clue in terms of what's happening in the big grander story. So I'm fascinated to uh, get into that a little bit. Um, I can't watch the episode one intro to Parto, so I'm not supposed to. <laughs> it's a secret. Uh, <laughs> we've been told not to watch it. You, yes, you guys watch it. Please go back and watch. Um, but uh, let's see, just some stuff to wrap up. So yes, uh, we have episode eight this Wednesday. We are going to take uh, the, the week after that will be our week off, but then we'll be back after that with more schedule stuff. But be on the lookout. We got more, so much more fun stuff coming. We've been doing a lot of clips across our social medias, uh, having great moments from the show. Uh, let's see. There's another episode of Slayer TPK up on the Patreon uh, that, that Cristobal keeps treating us with. And um, I'm sure I'm forgetting other things. Let me check my notes. Stand by. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, and um, uh, we are we're going to be uh, uh, like working or possibly working on some new some new Patreon rewards. Uh, so we'll probably put out a poll asking for your opinion on that. So if you are a patron, definitely uh, uh, when we share that uh, poll, let us know your thoughts because absolutely. See, Joe, we will give Cristobal, uh, Cristobal yeah, a hug for you. Yeah, he needs Absolutely. all the hugs. He definitely truly. does. He was breaking my heart this last week. Yeah. He's so stylish and so sad. Uh, <laughs> Ron Kilderin, Ron will be out one week for his wedding uh, coming up. That's right. Uh, in, later in September. So, uh, yes, we're, we'll be, we, uh, Jared will be solo DMing for, for an episode in the future soon. Uh, so much going on with our cast. People having babies. People getting married. Oh, my goodness. All this stuff. But um, yeah, that's that's it for now, though, folks. Thanks so much for joining us. Happy Monday. Uh, have a great Labor Day if you're here in the U.S. or what's left of it. We'll see you Wednesday night. Uh, this is this has been the Dungeon Cooldown with Serena Marie and Morgan Peter Brown. Thank you so much, friends. Uh, we love you. And I feel like I'm forgetting something. Am I forget? No, I don't think I am. No, you're perfect. <laughs> okay, you're doing great. You. You're perfect. You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Do great, Kirk. Uh, thanks so much, chat. We love you guys. Have a great rest of your night. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.